Ah, the sizzle of McDonald's sausage. It's enough to make you crave your favorite breakfasts. Enough to head over to McDonald's. Enough to make you really wish this commercial were scratch and sniff. And if you're a sausage person, now get two satisfyingly savory sausage McGriddles, sausage biscuits, or sausage burritos for just three thirty three, or mix and match. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Ba da ba ba ba. down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Remember that old Lum and Edward saying, look before you leap? An old saying now, but how important it is to follow it, even today. Especially when you're buying a food product, such as malted milk. With many inferior articles offered as malted milk everywhere at cheap prices, it is more important than ever that you look well before you buy. Is that cheaper brand really as good as Horlicks, the original? Does it contain the rich, full cream milk that Horlicks does? Or is it made with skim milk? Does it, like Horlicks, contain only choice selected wheat and fine malted barley, specially processed to preserve minerals and vitamins? Or is it just a mixture of inferior malt powder, raw cocoa, and ordinary sugar? Satisfy yourself on all these points. And you'll soon see that no cheap imitation can begin to compare with Horlicks. For quality, for flavor, and results, Horlicks malted milk is known round the world as the finest there is. Remember that, and when next you buy malted milk, get Horlicks, the original. You can get it, you know, at your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, things look a little blue for the Pine Ridge movie magnets. First the musician, then the carpenters, and finally the motion picture operator have joined the payroll of Squire Skimp, who is opening up an opposition house. Since the help deserted, Lum and Abner have been forced to take over the job of getting the theater ready. And as we look in on them tonight, we find the old fellows substituting for the carpenters, who ought to be rushing the Pine Ridge planetarium toward an early opening date. Listen. Doing. Why, we're trying to get things finished up around here. Well, where's all your carpenters? I thought Ezra Seastrunk had charge of this remodeling. Well, he did, but they all quit and went to work for Squire Skin. Yeah, Squire come over here and offered them twice what we were the pan. You mean they just walked out and left things half finished here? Yeah, me and Abner's put in two days now. Working day and night, you might say. Had to just lock up the door over there. Yeah, I come by there a while ago looking for you and saw it was locked. What's the matter with man, Pat? Couldn't he look after the store for you? Well, he quit us, too. He's working for Squire now, too. Yeah, everybody quit us. Grand Pat and Cedric and everybody else. Cedric quit you? Yeah, well, we ain't holding it again, them, though, uh, Dig. Squire's just trying to keep us from opening up over here and offering them like they just couldn't afford not to take it. Well, I thought that you sent Cedric into the county seat to learn how to operate the picture machine so that he could run your show for you. Well, we did, but he gave us back the money we give him for his expenses. Yeah, we got another fella now, though, that's going to run it a heap better than Cedric. Who's that, Edna? Me, I don't. Well, you don't know anything about running a moving picture machine, do you? Well, I don't know where I do or not. I never tried it. I think Abner will catch on to it all right. Oh, yeah. The machine will be out here tomorrow, and he's going to practice a few days before we open up. So, Squire's trying to keep you fellas from opening up, huh? Mm-hmm. Looks that way, sure. Yeah. You know, he got them chairs we was aiming on using from the lodge hall. 
See, he rented the whole thing over there, the hall and the chairs and everything. Yeah, yeah it's a shame the squire's putting in a show, too. He'll make a mean competitor. Won't stop at anything. No. Oh, we found that out. Well, I'd hate to see you fellas lose a bunch of money in this thing. Well, we've gone too far now to back out. Now, I've always felt so. If a man does right, why, well, he'll come out on top. As far as having everything his way now, looks like, but I just can't believe a man can make a sucks out of nothing and going about it like he is. No, no, me neither. Me and Abner's just going on about our business, trying to be upright and honest in all our dealings. And if we can't make a success out of it that way, well, we'll just have to lose, that's all. Well, now, you're just right about it, too. I'm glad to hear you talk that way. Of course, it's awful unencouraging right now. Looks like everything's going again, us. We want to get opened up and going before Squire got that place he is ready. But I don't know now. All these carpenters are taking out and quitting. Well, let's see. What all have you got to do yet? Well, we got to finish the lobby out there, then build a box office there in front. And, of course, we got to paint the front, too. Well, now, we got to get some seats lined. Don't forget that. Yeah, that's another thing that's going to slow us up. We can't afford to buy no new ones. Well, I was just thinking, you know, I'll be there's a place in there at the county seat that rents them folding chairs out. Rents them out? Yeah. Well, now, that's just what we need if we can find them. Well, I'm going in there tomorrow. I'll look around see if I can't pick you up some. How many you need? Well, I don't know hardly now. Squire's opened up again. There were 200 of them we thought we was going to get from the lodge, but I reckon we won't need that many now. Well, now, if I were you fellas, I wouldn't stand back on Squire's account. Just go ahead as though he wasn't even over there. Just taking on him, huh? Why, sure. I'd like to see you fellas run him clear out of business. Well, all we can do is just open it up and hope. Hope that the folks come here instead of going over there. Well, I believe that you two fellas have got a lot more friends around here than Squire. Well, I'd hate to think that we never. Why, sure. And I know they'd rather patronize your show than his. There ain't hardly anybody here in town that Squire ain't skinned at one time or another with some... Fake stock scheme or skin game of some kind. No. Yeah, he's awful bad about that. All has got something to sell. I never seen a fella like him. He ain't did an honest day's work as long as I've known him. Yeah, but one thing he does know, and that's the show business. You know how well he done with our circus when he's running that for us. Yeah, I know how he cheated us out of it. Yeah, but what I'm talking about, he got the crowds out to it. He'd get out there in front making them speeches and telling them anything to get them inside. I was always sitting there waiting to sell tickets. Had to hide my face. I, I couldn't bear to hear him tell them all them things, knowing that they weren't so. Well, every time I heard him give one of them speeches out front, why, I all just broke my neck to get on the inside to see the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thought every time that we must have some stuff in there that I never knowed anything about. <laughs> Abner would, he would. He'd go right in there and look all around for the stuff for our town on that. Well, of course, that's all right when you're moving from town to town like he was with the circus. But now, running a picture show while well, you're catering to the same people every day. You can't misrepresent things to them or they won't come back. Yeah, like that old saying of mine. You can fool some of the people all of the time, but you can't fool all of the people some of the... Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, now, for the land sake, talk about the devil and his image will appear. Look oh, on. my goodness alive. Now, what's he doing coming over here? <laughs> I hope he ain't going to try to hire me and you now, Lon. No. <laughs> well, maybe I better run along. He'll more likely want to talk business with you. No, now, check still, Dick. He ain't going to talk nothing with him. I don't know what he wants, but I know I ain't going to do it, whatever it is. No, me neither. Wait a minute. Well, howdy, Squire. Come in. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Hello, Squire. How are you, Squire? Why, all right, I reckon, Dick. Uh... Rom, I just wondered if I couldn't see you uh, private on a little business matter here. Well, whatever you've got to say, Squire, you can just say it right out in front of Dick here. Well, all right. It, it don't make a lot of difference to me, I don't guess. Well, I can step outside while you fellas talk. No, no, no. It's that still, Dave. What was it, Squire? Uh, well, I just noticing you men aren't getting along very fast with your remodeling here. Yeah, we're getting along all right. I'll be opened up and doing a big business long before you men get this place ready here. Well, you are to. You hired every carpenter in the town away from us. Yes, yes, well, now that's what I want to talk to you about, Lum. I, I feel bad about that, too. Uh, I'm afraid that I've inconvenienced you. We've been friends too long to let anything like that come between us. I, I guess that uh, 
I offered them a little better wages. Not knowing it, of course. Yeah, you know blame well you did. It just looks like that you fellows made a big mistake by not taking me in as a third partner. And I just thought that I'd drop over and see if you men had changed your mind about that. Uh, reconsider my proposition. Well, how much would you pay for a third interest, Squire? Oh, well, uh... The other day, Lum, I was willing to put up a third of the cost opening up this place. But, uh, of course, I couldn't do anything like that now. But I've got a new offer to make you. A new one? Yes. <laughs> Man, I figured you'd see where you're making a mistake opening up again. Well, I, I'll stop the work on mine right now and not open it up. We'll change the name of this one to uh, the name that I had picked out for mine. I'll change the name to Skimp Hippodrome. And the three of us are going together as equal partners with uh, me as manager. And you gentlemen uh, put up the money and I'll manage the theater. Wait a minute. You mean just give you a third interest in it for nothing? Well, no, uh, not giving it to me long exactly. Uh, you'd be buying my goodwill and experience in the show business and getting rid of a competitor at the same time. Now, uh, hold on. Let me get this straight. Uh, me and Abner put up all the money, and you take over the management of it, and uh, we'd all three be equal partners, huh? Yes, yes. I'd be willing to split the profits three ways with you. Give you men just as much as to take for myself, on account of uh, us being such old friends, you know. Well, let's see, Squire. You made us a proposition... Now I'm going to make you one. Yes, well, fun. I'm all this, and that's the only way to get together on a deal. Now, careful now, Lom. I know what I'm doing, Admiral. Squire, we'll give you, uh... Yes, yes. We'll give you just two minutes to get out that front door there. I'll take this saw horse and rump it right around your neck. Now get out of here, and don't you never stick that ugly face of yours back in here again. Yeah, me now, too. Now, scat. You can just go jump in the lake. That's who you are, and I'm the man that can do it, too. Well, all right, gentlemen, if that's the way you feel about it. But I'll tell you one thing. You haven't heard the last from Squire Skin. I'll see that this show will never open its doors. That I promise. Good day. Hmm. Well, I might have did wrong. No telling what he will do now. Well, I'm glad you done just that. Them was the very words that I was going to say, Lum. Oh, now, I couldn't think of it. All right, Granny, we've got to open up first now. By Jack, you will open up first, too. I'll help you. Get me a hammer there, a saw, and tell me what to do. We'll get this show opened up first, and we have to work night and day. Well, it looks as though Dick Huddleston may help to avert the total eclipse that's been threatening the Pine Ridge Planetarium. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any children of your own, I think you'll appreciate a letter I brought along tonight. It's from little Mary Jean of Lima, Ohio. Here's what she says. I'm a little girl eight years old. My mother says that when I was a tiny baby, I cried all the time because I was hungry. I guess you would cry too if you were hungry. But the doctor told mother to give me horlicks smothered milk. And from two weeks old, I was raised on it. Last year, my teacher sent mother a note to tell her I was the only one in the room that was the exact weight and height for my age. I still love to drink Horlicks. Well, good for you, Mary Jean. You just keep on drinking plenty of Horlicks. It's a fine drink for youngsters, as thousands upon thousands of mothers have already found out. Medical and child feeding authorities, too, have always recommended Horlicks for children of all ages. Mothers, get some for your children. Your druggist has it, you know, in both natural and chocolate flavors. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.
the sizzle of McDonald's sausage. It's enough to make you crave your favorite breakfast. Enough to head over to McDonald's. Enough to make you really wish this commercial were scratch and sniff. And if you're a sausage person, now get two satisfyingly savory sausage McGriddles, sausage biscuits, or sausage burritos for just three thirty three, or mix and match. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Ba da ba ba ba.